as the wise prophets from the 90s once said, sometimes it's not your week, your month, or even your year. I haven't had the spoons to record any of the videos that I should or want to be making right now. I want to bring you some more color spotlight, a new top brands video, videos that you know would be helpful resources for the watercolor community and you know do well with the algorithm. And if not those bigger projects, I thought about recording another Swatch With Me video, which I have several of waiting to be filmed, but it once again has been a while since my last upload and I wanted to provide some context for all of that nonsense. So today I'm going to try something a little bit different, though historically this hasn't gone super well for me on this channel, but I hope you do enjoy it. And if I'm being honest, I hope that the algorithm gods don't smite me where I stand. We're going to have a little chatty painting video today, which a lot of you have actually been asking for. If you would like to help with this venture of different type of video, please leave a like or a comment to let me know what you think. Today we are going to talk about mental health, not only because I think it's important, but also because my struggle with my own mental health has absolutely dominated my life for the last month or so. I have talked about other hardships that I faced over the past three years in other videos, so I'm not going to rehash them here. What I will say is that I thought I was finally getting back on my feet and the universe said, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> A month ago, my upstairs neighbors caused a flood that resulted in my apartment having damages that would require major repairs. I ended up needing to go through with an emergency move with less than 18 hours notice. Ultimately, I am grateful that the apartment complex had another unit for me to move into. Amazing, A+, much appreciated. But a move is never easy, especially with chronic pain. And to do a move with less than a day's notice when you have a full art studio and home office is insane. So it has been a heck of a month over here. The pets are doing okay. Cricket did take this move harder than our others, but she's finally settling in. And I am very lucky that I was awake when the flooding started so that I was able to mitigate the damage to my belongings. One point for Team Night Owl. However, mentally and emotionally, I am not okay. <laughs> um, my apartment in Austin also flooded due to an upstairs neighbors during the snowpocalypse two years ago in 2021. I knew I had trauma from that event and I'm not a stranger to anxiety or panic attacks in general, but the PTSD I experienced the night of this flood was so far beyond anything that I have experienced before. I won't go into the details of what that actually look like because it was bad and a lot, but I do have to give a shout out to my incredible friend who stayed on the phone with me that night until maintenance arrived to get things under control. I could not have gone through that without her. Anyways, as expected, the move was physically draining and I've also been going through some unrelated personal things that have also added pretty heavily to the depression over the last several weeks, hence the lack of uploads. Part of me is extremely glad that I am self-employed because I don't know how I would have managed to show up to a nine to five job consistently this past month, but it's also extremely difficult being self-employed since if you can't work, there's no PTO or benefits to cover your butt. All of this has made me feel equally exhausted and isolated. It's been hard to just keep going when there doesn't seem to be any respite from one event to the next causing these setbacks that have now lasted for years. And now we have the added fun of us all going into like, you know, a big recession to make finances even more of a strain. In any case, I feel like I've been a broken record for the past several years while desperately trying to grasp for normalcy and hoping that better days around the corner. And they just haven't been. I've always been really envious of people who are able to find gratitude in everything that happens to and around them. I do practice gratitude and I am grateful for the good things in my life, especially for the incredible people that surround me, but I don't feel grateful for the trauma. Some things, and I can only speak to my own experience, have not made me stronger. I've always really hated that phrase, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, 
Sometimes bad things happen and they're just bad. They don't bring insight, they don't bring resilience, they bring trauma and pain and anxiety and depression. This isn't a lack of positivity or trying to be positive. Different brains process information differently and the severity or sheer quantity of hardship someone may experience affects people differently. So yeah, I'm pretty envious of people who feel like everything happens to them to make them a better or stronger person. Something that I've been told by several people throughout my life is how they admire how I smile and laugh even when things really effing suck. It's phrased and meant as a compliment and I know that, but I don't receive it as one. That is a coping mechanism and when I'm told that, it feels like an acknowledgement that I am in pain, but also it's reinforcing the social norm of just like covering it up and brushing it under the rug. Now, the pandemic has sucked and I wish it never happened, truly, but one of the silver linings is that mental health has been brought into the spotlight. It is more widely discussed now, at least here in the US, but we still have a long way to go. I still see a lot of toxic positivity and people being dismissive of what others are going through, not only in mental health, but in numerous aspects of life. Our country is so divided. There are so many reasons for that, and I cannot cover them all in this short video, but I feel like so much of it comes down to a lack of empathy and compassion and acceptance for those around us. Anyway, I have clearly been deep in the feels lately, and this video does serve a little bit as a self-serving journal entry of sorts. However, as usual, when I bring up these heavier topics, I'm not doing so to be negative or to garner sympathy for myself. I genuinely want to share these thoughts and these feelings with you in case some of you all have been feeling this as well. If you do feel similarly, I want you to know that I see you and you are valid. Life sucks right now for a lot of us, and I am sorry that you are hurting. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to make it better, but I will sit with you here and hold some space for you to feel what you're feeling. This artwork is a repaint of a spread I did in one of my art journals in January of 2021, which was actually right before the huge snowstorm in Austin. I had gone through a really hard year and I felt like I was finally emerging on the other side. In hindsight, that obviously was not the case. However, I felt like I needed some of this hopeful energy in my life right now. So here's to hoping once again that there are brighter days ahead of this current darkness. All of the materials I used to paint this are in the description below. The dark spiral in the deer did end up larger than I intended, so in the picture that you'll see at the end of this video, I did visually resize them to better fit the scale of the original sketch. 
Alrighty, friend, that is all for today. Remember that you are valid, your feelings and emotions are valid. I can't promise that tomorrow is going to be better, but I sure hope it is. And I'm sending lots of good vibes out there for you. Thank you for watching today. I normally sign off with a happy painting, but that feels a little bit insincere if you're not feeling those happy vibes. So instead, I will simply say, I'll see you next time.